Hello, hello, and welcome to another CPD talk. My name is Jasmine, and I am the blood transfusion senior at Medway, and I'm also the head of training in NKPS. Today, I'm going to be going through a talk on antigen and gene nomenclature. I apologise, I butcher that word every time, and you're going to have to hear it a lot. Um, when you work in blood transfusion, you will find, depending on who you talk to or what you're talking about, everyone will call antigens antibodies that all have different names, as highlighted below you've got JK, you've got kids, you've got 009, JK star 01. We're basically going to go through what all that means and why there are so many names floating around for different antigen groups. So as I said what we're going to cover is why there are so many names, what the names refer to. There is a worksheet to go alongside this because I think this takes this is not something that immediately clicks with people and it's something that I find I still have to work on. So having a practical example to work through will really help taking this information. We're then going to go through what ISBT is, which names we should be using, some common mistakes, and then we're going to wrap it all up. So let's get started. As with most things in the scientific community, blood groups and their corresponding antibodies, genes, antigens, have historically been named by the person who discovered them or the person they were first discovered in. This has meant that when all the blood grouping systems were being named there wasn't a standard system in place for this. So as I said some were named after the first set of patients to be found with the corresponding antibody, after the first person who discovered them, after the location of where they were discovered or in some cases after similar antibody or antigens that had been previously discovered. This makes it extremely confusing to keep track of names of all of these. When can we call K Kel and why are we no longer call, allowed to call RH Rhesus? Like it changes this all the time. It is for this amongst other reasons that the ISBT have given each antigen and gene its own number. I've said here it's so that when we're discussing any of these details there's no confusion about what is actually being discussed. While that is correct, the numerical format is more in terms of when entering data, so it makes it a bit easier if everyone's using the same format for data submission. This system is not currently in great use in UK blood transfusion labs, however it is used a lot more in Europe. Um, and there is still important knowledge to be aware of. Each antigen belonging to a blood group system is identified by a six digit number. The first three digits represent the system. So for example, 006 is the system name for Kel. The second three will be the specificity. So 006, 003, is talking about KPA because it is the third antigen in the Kell blood group. Alternatively, the system symbol followed by the antigen number may be used. So Kell is the symbol for that system and 003 is still KPA. Or more usually, you just do Kell 3 and get rid of the zeros. Phenotypes, however, represented by the system symbol followed by a colon followed by a list of antigens separated by commas. These antigens shown to be absent are produced by a minus signal. So that sounds very complicated and you can see there's a small example there, but it's gonna make more sense when I've got the whole table in front of me. So I'll go through that in more detail in a moment. Alleles, however, are designated by the system symbol followed by an asterisk. Whenever we have an asterisk involved, it is to do with genetics, basically, um, and the antigen number or italicized. I don't know why they're not italicized in this. I thought I had done that, so I apologize in advance. So it should be slanty <laughs> and it should say Kel star 02. Genotypes have the system symbol followed by an asterisk, alleles or haplotypes separated by a slash, all italicized. So cal 0.2.0.3 slash 02. When we get reports back from IBGRL, they do have 
information in this format. So again, I'm going to go through some examples in a minute. For collections, antigen, phenotype, gene and genotype, designations are constructed in the same way. And then there's a different series that you're not going to deal with very much, which is the 700 and the 901 series, which replace the system symbol. So I'm going to go through the a grouping system um, to explain what we've just gone through, basically, because, as I said, it was a bit confusing. Right. So blood group. When we talk about blood group and blood grouping systems, a lot of people think ABO. When we actually, what we actually mean is a blood grouping system is something like Kel, Duffy, MNNS. The ABO is a blood grouping system, but that's not the only blood grouping system. So in this case, when we talk about Duffy, the traditional term is Duffy. The ISBT would say that it's the blood grouping system is denoted by FY or 008. If we talk about FYA, the ISBT denotation for that would be FY1 because it's the first antigen in that blood group, or 008 again because that's the blood group number 001. The phenotype, so if we are saying that a patient's phenotype is, so if we're saying that patient's phenotype is FYA positive and FYB negative, we'd denote it like that in the traditional format. In the ISBT format it would be FY colon 1 because it's got the first antigen present and then minus 2 because it's lacking the second antigen and technically you could go through the whole of the Duffy so you could go into 3, 4, 5 and 6 if you so wanted and had that information. The genetic side of things we also use italics in the traditional so it would be FYA in italics. If you're talking about ISBT then it would be FY star 01 again because 01 is the denotation of FYA or you can do FY star A. The genetic part of it is a bit more complicated so you can see this is where we're talking about the different alleles etc so don't worry too much about that. The genotype this is obviously where you're looking at how the patient has inherited things so they've got FYA FYA so it will be FY asterisk 01 slash FY asterisk 01 or FY asterisk A slash FY asterisk A or if you knew that they were FYA and didn't know what their corresponding FY would be then it would be FY asterisk 01 FY asterisk N so the N is basically a representation of you're not sure which number it is. Hopefully that has all made sense. I know it's a lot of repetitive talking, but this table is the best way to describe what's going on. Here's an overall table, and there are three pages of it, of all of the current blood grouping systems. So if we were to have a look here at the Duffy, because that's what we've just gone through, you can see that they've got 008, because it is the eighth blood grouping system. The name is Duffy and the system is FY, as we spoke about. There are five antigens in this system. They talk about specific genes, and we can go through that in a moment. There are currently 43 blood grouping systems, and this changes regularly. So I would very much recommend that if you are watching this even a month after it's been released, to go and have a look on their website and see exactly um, how many systems there are now. If we then have a look at the different systems and the antigen numbers, you can see it goes in order. So if we were to take the uh, M and an S, it is the second system. The first antigen in there is M, so it will be denoted by 002001 or MN and S1 etc. Um, and you can see obviously some of them will be off the page so in the MNNS it's one of the biggest blood grouping systems so there are 50 antigens within this. Now we have been through this please attempt the worksheet. 
I would suggest um, going either finding this PowerPoint on QPulse or going back and pausing it at the specific points where it has the tables there because they will really help you work out what number each antigen blood group is unless you want to go to the ISBT's website which I will have in the description box below. Um, again please don't worry if you struggle it's very difficult to get the hang of this initially but once you do it will be a really useful skill. So if you pause the video now. Okay this is question one so you can see you get the system symbol, traditional name, traditional antigen name, and ISBT antigen name and number. Uh, so this is not the genetics, this is the basics of the names of antigens and symbols, etc. So, I have just magically filled in the result. The first one was more of an easy one because it was the ABO. So we've got the system symbol is ABO, the traditional name is ABO, so they're the same, it's nice when they're the same. Uh, the traditional antigen name is A, so it's the first one, so it's ABO01. The second one was Kel, um, and we actually went through this in one of the examples, so if you got this one wrong, then you obviously weren't paying enough attention. <laughs> the third one was Kid, so this was JKA, sorry, JK, Kid, JK3, then it's JK3 or 009003, 9.3. The next one was LE, which is Lewis, LEB, so that's the second antigen in that system, so it's LE2. And MNNS, I gave you a hard, I, I tried to mix it up here, so this is the eighth one in that, eighth antigen in that group, so it's MNNS8. And finally, RH, you've got G, because everyone knows I love G, uh, and that's RH12. So hopefully that will make sense. I think it's the genetics bit that's harder, so let's move on to that. We're going to go through some phenotypes. So you can see here we have got JKA and the RH to put into ISBT, and then we've got another RH and an MNNS, and we've got it in phenotypes, and then in the genotypes we've got JKA, JKA, LEA, LEB, and then you've got the MNNS and Lutheran to deal with. So, in the phenotype, AKA positive and B negative would be JK1 minus 2. The RH, so you'd have 1 because they're D positive, 2 because they're C positive, minus 3 because they're big E negative, minus 4 because they're little c negative, and 5 because they're little e positive. So then if we flip it around, you can see that you've got minus one, minus two, minus three. So that indicates that they are DCE negative. And then you've got four and five. So they're little c, little e positive. With the MNNS, you can see it's one, minus two, three, minus four. So one is M, so they're M positive. Two is N, so they're N negative. Three is S, so they're S positive. And four is little s, so they're S negative. Moving on to the genotypes. We started off with JKA, JKA. Um, since JKA is the first in that blood group, it will be JK star 01, JK star 01. You've then got LEA, LEB, which is LE star 01, LE star 02. Then you've got MNS star 01, MNS star 01, so that's MM. Uh, and then you've got LUA. LUB because you've got LU star 01 and LU star 02. Hopefully that all makes sense. I'm now going to go through what ISBT is because I've said that acronym several times throughout this talk and it basically stands for International Society of Blood Transfusion. It was founded in 1935 and its purpose is to share knowledge to enhance transfusion knowledge. As part of this they have several working parties one of which being the Red Salt Immunogetics and Blood Group Terminology Working Party, which is who we're basically discussing today. They are involved in the genetically based numerical terminology for red cell surface antigens. By definition, these antigens must be defined serologically by the use of specific antibodies. 
All antigens receive a unique ISBT number and must have been shown to be inherited characters. They advise, maintain and monitor the terminology for blood group genes and genetic classification for blood group antigens. They offer members the opportunity to participate in the development and maintenance of nomenclature. And they discuss all issues related to molecular typing as well as the analysis of blood group genes. That was a mouthful. So the ISBT website has a lot of great resources, not just on this topic, but because they have so many working parties and because they're specifically for blood transfusion, there is a lot of interesting stuff on their website. So I thoroughly recommend reading up on them. Again, I'll put the link in the description box below. So today we've gone through all of the different names. But when it comes to what you should be using in the laboratory, these are the important things to note. It depends on the format and scenario. So if you're talking to someone over the phone and you start quoting these numbers at them, they're probably going to be very confused and they would have to look it up, right? There are very few people that are going to know these numbers off by heart and therefore you would refer them in the traditional terminology. However, if it's written down and it's a report and it's a report about the genetics and this normally uses the ISBT format, if it's just an RCI report, then again, these use the traditional terms. It's still important to know the differences, as in a lot of journals and research, they will use the ISBT terminology. It's also important to know what should be used when using the traditional terminology. For example, you wouldn't say Duffy A, you would say FYA, because Duffy is the name of the system, not the antigen slash antibody. So you need to ensure that you know when each type of terminology is appropriate. As with all science, names change. It's important to be aware of that. The biggest mistakes that people make with traditional names are calling RH rhesus. This is no longer acceptable. Rhesus is the terminology for a monkey and not a blood group. Calling the K antigen KEL. KEL is the name of the blood group system, not the antigen or antibody. And not keeping up to date with name changes. So for example, in P1, PK blood grouping system, um, the first antigen in that has had its names changed a couple of times. Hopefully this will have been interesting for some of you and will have helped you all understand certain reports better um, and possibly any journals that you've been reading. If you do have any questions on this then please do let me know. If you do have any questions on this then please come and find me or drop me an email and don't forget to complete a reflective blog on this. Thank you all so much for watching and I look forward to the next talk. Bye!